Welcome. I don't know if you can see me too terribly well, but my name is Michael Beebe and I'm a jazz and classical pianist trying to make my way through the video thickets of YouTube with instructional videos and performance videos of various sorts. Um, I have publications out which are available from J.W. Pepper's MyScore program and Sheet Music Plus's M. P M <laughs> Sheet Music Plus M S M P <laughs> Press. Um, but today I want to talk about something that many of my students have been raising questions about, and I want to show you something fun that's only tangentially related to any publication. We're going to pick this note B flat, which you can see right here. That might also might come in handy. And here's the big question which we're going to find a zillion answers to. How to harmonize this B flat. Okay, This B flat is not the root of our chord, it's the melody tone. That's why we're going to harmonize it, not use it to harmonize others. Okay, So we have a B flat in the melody. And now we've got all these other possible roots for chords, and we've got three note chords, and we've got four note chords. Beyond that, we can even have five note chords up to the ninth. Maybe we'll take that. Maybe we'll even go to eleventh and thirteenth. Well, there's a scale played as a chord, right? So those are our possibilities, and we're going to try to find every single chord from every single root that a B flat will fit on top of. Okay, so obviously the place to begin. B flat major. Here's a B flat, here's B flat major. No big deal. As basic as it gets. Uh, one notch off of basic is B flat minor. Okay, then B flat diminished, clear as a bell, right? And of course the one that's a little stranger is B flat augmented. Okay, so there's four chords major, minor, diminished, and augmented. Now, there'll be a major, a minor, a diminished, and augmented triad on every single other degree of the chromatic scale. Let's see how many plain triads we can get to fit with this B flat. Perhaps it's in our harmonic spelling A sharp but maybe not necessarily. So the next chromatic tone up is B or C flat. We can think of it either way. I'll try to speak, uh, we'll go with flats, all right? We're gonna get C flat, but who cares? So here's C flat major, which makes a nice C flat major seven, right? Now here's C flat minor, a chord which technically doesn't exist, by the way, because it doesn't come from a key, but we don't care about that so much at the moment. If you wanted to call it B, you could. Here's minor with a major 7, right? A chord that's used quite often, right? Here's B or C flat diminished. And now this note becomes the major 7th of, of B or C flat diminished. That works just fine. And of course, C flat augmented major 7 is a kind of a modern jazz type of chord which uh, uh, classical composers use as well. So we had this B flat fitting over C flat major, C flat minor, C flat diminished, and C flat augmented. So far we're batting 4 for 4 times 2 which is 8. Now let's go to C. Okay. C major with the B flat on top equals C7 of course. And then C minor equals C minor 7. And then C diminished. C minor 7 flat 5, the so-called C half diminished chord. I like both of those terms. And then here's C augmented. Here's C dominant 7 augmented 5th. So you might spell that as C7 plus 5 or C7 aug, right? No problem there. So now we've got four more chords. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Let's go to D flat. We'll call it D flat. Here's D flat major. That's D flat six. 
and then here's D flat minor sixth, then here's D flat diminished, and here's D flat augmented. Now that one's a little bizarre because I think it really relates more to this chord, which is the same as that chord. So I'm a little unclear as to how to treat that. So we're going to be totally clear and say that one's not going to fly. Okay? So we've got three more. That was 12, 13, 14, 15. Okay? Here's the D chords, right? There's D major with the B flat on top. Well, that's an inversion of this. So we're not doing inversions. We're doing this is the root, right? So that one's not going so well. That one's not going so well. And this one, D diminished, really is B flat 7. So that one's not going very well. And But D augmented is perfect, right? It's an A sharp. Okay, we get that. So we're really only adding one more for a total of 16. Okay, now let's go to E flat. Well, E flat's the fifth, or B flat's the fifth of E flat. No big deal there, right? So here's E flat major, E flat minor, but now we get to E flat diminished, and that's just not going to work. Diminished is not going to work, and major isn't going to work. If for no other reason than that's this chord, it's already been stretched out. So we get two more, the major and the minor. That's 16 total chords. Now here's E. What are we going to do with E? 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. I'm going to go with this one. This is E, dominant 7, 9, and plus 11, okay? We could even say flat 5, but we want that note to be on top, so we're going to use that, okay? Now let's see if we can put it on top of E minor. Not going to work, right? This, this just kills us here, right? This is a modern construction called a hexachord. Uh, is that going to work? That's the official hexachord. D sharp minor on top of E minor. We're not going there because it's not tonal, okay? So E major has got this uh, E7, uh, 9 plus 11. E minor's got nothing. E diminished, of course, is perfect. Let's try E augmented. Well, there's E7 augmented fifth. Ninth raised 11. So we get three more chords out of this, and I'm starting to lose track of the numbers, but I kind of don't care. Now here's F. Well, F is going to be interesting as well, because F major, that's atrocious, right? But F minor, very nice. We can even fill it in, right? F minor 11. And we can even say F11 can feel like it, but we're trying to go straight up triads here, right? So that one's good. Let's try the diminished. Oh, that's pretty. That's F diminished 11. Let's try the augmented. Ooh, that's awful. So we only got two out of the F, which was the minor and the diminished. Let's try G flat. We'll call it G flat, okay? So we got clearly no problem, right? But because that's the major third, we're not going to get anything out of G flat minor, a chord which also technically doesn't exist. But let's try G flat diminished, just as bad, but let's try G flat augmented. No problem there, right? So we get two more out of G flat. Now let's try G major. Well, I think we're going to call that one G7, raise 9, how about that, and then G minor, or minor 7, minor is the simplest, we'll take the simplest we can get, and of course G diminished is great, but what about G augmented? I 
would say that that chord, G, B, D sharp, G, B flat, is really more like a D flat type chord, and we would not analyze that as a G chord. So we're only going to get two out of this. The, the raised nine, which is the real genus, and the G minor, and, or three rather, and here's the G diminished. That was good. Here's A flat. A flat major nine. Looks good. A flat minor major nine. A flat minor nine. Let me get, now we're starting to get some good variations. How about this? There's A flat diminished ninth. You can put the G in there, right? Let's try augmented. Flat augmented ninth, so we got a whole bunch of A flat. Let's try A. A7, flat nine. A minor seven though? Really not gonna work. Dominant chord's good, minor not so good. Yeah, diminished, terrible. Augmented? not going to fly. So the only one we got was the major triad in its dominant seventh form. Only one out of that goodie. Which brings us back home to B flat. Okay. Now we've done ones, threes, fives, and sevens. Let's see how many nines we can get out of this just to make sure we've covered them all. Right? We've got A flat, major nine, minor major nine, We've got A7, flat 9, and then we've got G7, raise 9, by the way, I forgot this one, A flat, dominant 9, and then here's no 9th there, that's an 11th, this is an 11th, no 11th, that's a 5th. That's a that's a thirteenth. That's a thirteenth. That's a seventh. So there weren't too many of those. Let's find the thirteenths, right? Here's E, uh, or excuse me, E, uh, what am I? D. D, seven flat thirteen. D flat seven. Fifth. Here's E. That's the eleventh. And here's F. That's the minor eleven. So the upshot of all of this is that any tone can be one, major or minor three. Perfect fifth, diminished fifth, or augmented fifth. It can be the dominant seventh or even part of a minor seventh chord, or it could be the major seventh of either a major triad or a minor. So that's one, three, five, seven. It could be the ninth of various chords. And it could be the eleventh. It can be the thirteenth. So this simple B flat could be one major or minor three, perfect, augmented, or diminished fifth, minor or major seventh, flatted ninth, ninth, or raised ninth, eleventh, or raised eleventh, flatted thirteenth, thirteenth, or even fifteen. Plenty of flexibility there. Hope you've enjoyed this little bit. In the back of my book, Bebop Hannon, part three, the chords, you'll find this listed in a section called the Total Harmonization Lexicon. Thanks for listening.